In the home, in the backyard or on the side of the house, out of the way, you have the condensing unit. What are the two components in that condensing unit? Compressor and condensing coil. And then you have a line set, copper lines, one bare, one insulated. Fluid goes to the building, away from the building, or to the house or away from the house. And either you have an attic, thing called a furnace, or in a closet, it'll be either horizontal in the attic or vertical in the closet. And inside here, what type of coil do you have? The evaporator, the evaporator. What other components up there in the furnace close to the evaporator? The expansion valve, what controls the refrigerant flow. So this is used to cool down the air, which is then distributed through the house to duct system. We also took a look at this type of furnace. Here's a, a coil, the A coil, because it's typically shaped this way. And the airflow comes up inside and then passes over the coils, is cooled, and then it goes out in the duct system and distributed. Condenser or evaporator? The A coil is the evaporator. And we covered a lot more about that. Last time we also, I showed you a picture of an A coil, traditional A coil. I think I showed two pictures. We talked about lines that connect for the condensate drain. And we talked about there's a small diameter connection that needs to be hooked up and a large diameter connection hooked up. And then this sits tightly inside of a ductwork where it's sealed on these faces here. And so I asked these questions as review. I want everybody to answer these questions on your sheet of paper. And I'll pause and walk around and make sure that you get this down. So what flows in the large diameter line? Liquid? Or vapor, that's your choice, right? Is it liquid or vapor that flows in the large diameter line? It, what direction does it flow in the large diameter line? Does it flow to the coil or away from the coil? Is it hot or cold if I grabbed that large diameter line? If I grabbed it and touched it, would I sense it being hot or cold? And what would be the pressure inside that large diameter line right there at the connection where you're going to hook it up when you're running it is it going to be a high pressure or low pressure so answer all those questions for the large diameter and then the same questions for the small diameter okay i'm going to pause please answer them i'm going to walk around and see how you do it's going to be as soon as you pass this class right it's like, oh, what'd you study in thermodynamics? Oh, I have a problem with my air conditioning system. Please come diagnose it. Anyway, and plus there's a lot of careers out there. There's just a lot of people who graduated and they work in this type of industry. So do you want the answer or do you want to struggle? Answer. answer. Struggle. Nobody wants to struggle. <laughs> All right, the large diameter line, liquid or vapor? All right, I heard lick vapor. Uh, vapor. You need more room for the vapor. The density of the liquid is so high, you don't need a large. Is the mass flow rate in the large diameter line equal to the mass flow rate in the small diameter line? Yeah, what comes in goes out. And so you need liquids compact, high density, smaller line is needed. What is the direction of the flow? Large diameter? coming out. It's an evaporator. The A coil is an evaporator. It evaporates, it goes to the vapor phase, true? So it's going to now go and leave the evaporator and go to the compressor. So it's going to go from the evaporator coil. That's, a, that's the A coil, the evaporator coil. Is it hot or cold? This is where a lot of people got it wrong. It just evaporated. It just boiled. When I say boil, you think hot, don't you? But it just evaporated at low pressure. Is it hot or cold? If I touch it, is it going to feel cold or is it going to, ouch? It's cold. It has to be colder than the air that it made colder, you're right? It, the air comes in here hot. Let's say the air comes in 75 and the air leaves at 55 degrees F, right? The refrigerant's typically 40 degrees F. 
It's coming out having boiled at 40 degrees F. That's relatively cold. It's not going to freeze your hand, but it's cold. Is it high pressure or low pressure? Low pressure. The evaporator is at low pressure. What's at high pressure? The other coil. What's the name of the other coil? The condenser is at high pressure. Now, the opposite is true for the small diameter. If you get the large diameter, you get the small diameter down, right? So what's in it? Liquid. What direction does it flow? It flows to the A coil, to the evaporator. Is it hot or cold? It's liquid in that line. But it's just got beat up and condensed. Beat up in the compressor and condensed in the condenser. It maybe had to reject heat to 120 degrees F. Right? Because you want your air conditioner to work on a hot, 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 hot day in August. To be reject heat to 120 degree F air, maybe it's 140, 160 degrees F. Is that hot or cold? 160 degree F, liquid, refrigerant in the line. It's hot. And is it under high pressure? Yes, yes it is. It's under high pressure. Right, right in here, it gets split, and then it, it goes, the pressure drop can occur in that smaller diameter line until it gets down here, okay? But essentially, when it enters the evaporator, the larger diameter tubes that, go, that are fin connected in that coil, it's at low pressure. But it's high pressure at the liquid line coming in. The restriction or metering device, sometimes they have a TXV, sometimes they just have a capillary tube to control it. Please struggle with this. Isn't this good? Right? You can 